Right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. This is going to be a short one. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this. I've got a uh, late 2021, early 2022 Volkswagen ID4 all-wheel drive pro model that I'm just going to give a quick look to. This is going to be a full review because I've done a review in another episode, and you can check the show notes to find that episode. I reviewed in quite detail the uh, single motor variant, the rear-wheel drive ID4 Pro last fall. Uh, so I went over a lot of stuff here in that, excuse me, in that review. I'm not going to do it here today. This is going to be just kind of a quick impressions about what I feel about the all-wheel drive version versus the rear-wheel drive version, because I do get asked a lot of questions about that, especially in cold weather climates. And the weather's been perfect until this morning when I decided, when I had planned to come out and film, all of a sudden we've got a lot of snow. So... Uh, if things get blown around, you hear some wind noise and stuff, I, I apologize for that. I'll try to get through this as quick as I can. So thanks very much for joining me. Let me get right into it. Now, this is uh, still the beautiful sculpted form of the ID4, a vehicle that you folks know that I do like a lot. And I think it's a tremendous value um, for uh, yeah, people that are looking for a uh, a mid-size or small-size SUV. For small, this has actually got a lot of room in it. Um, and what the all-wheel drive gives you is another motor up front, some additional um, torque there as well, uh, and mostly more horsepower. So it just gives you that a little bit more uh, traction when you need it in days like today. The motor in front is smaller than the one in the rear, so it's more of an auxiliary motor, as VW calls it. Now the ID4, ID4 platform is still very much the same. There's nothing changed. This is the top of the line spec with the, the color and all that stuff, but the design is still very much Volkswagen. Now, as I mentioned, this is a dual motor, a, com a combination of 295 horsepower. Uh, the front motor gives you 120 pound-feet of torque. The rear motor gives you 229 for a combination just shy of 350. So it's a good amount of torque to get you going. Again, I talked about the different driving modes and things like that that are available in the ID4. This is no race car. This is not a Grand Prix car. This is a family mover, a stuff mover, a comfortable, you know, going around for nice drives mover. Uh, it's that kind of machine. Will do a lot of different things for you. Has a small towing capacity as well. So there's a lot of things that the ID4 can do. Kind of a mixed bag uh, in a really, really good way way but it's certainly not going to compete with some of the other EVs out there from acceleration and stuff. What this gives you from acceleration I believe is about a second and a half quicker than the rear. The single motor variant this is about 5.8 seconds or so zero to 60 or north to 60 as uh, my Brits say north to 100. Um, so that's pretty good but otherwise you know the technology options the feature packages and everything that's available on the single motor is very similar for the all-wheel drive version as well. Now, as I mentioned, this is classed as a small SUV. I don't know why, because to me, it's a little bit bigger than a small one. But uh, hey, you know, I'll just take, I'll read what's officially on paper. And again, with that additional front wheel, uh, front axle motor, it does add a bit more weight. And I do comment on my driving impressions coming up in a bit about that I do feel that extra weight, but just a little bit. It's only adding about 101 kilos, about 225 pounds or so, basically another me <laughs> that you're touting around all the time. Uh, yeah, folks, I know I got to lose some weight, but I'll get there eventually. Um, what it does is, again, it does make it, though, a little bit quicker, as I mentioned. And uh, it does impact, though, efficiency with an average efficiency on this of 22.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's an EPA rating with a range of 386 kilometers uh, for the dual motor, which is down a bit from 400 kilometers from the single motor variant. I've got birds flying. It's just one of those days, folks. Uh, so you do lose some range, and I will talk about some range numbers and show you what I got real life at the end uh, once I finish my calculations. But uh, one thing about VW is they do tend to be fairly, uh, not, they're not overly aggressive in their range estimations. They're actually a bit more conservative. So what you see is almost what you get for normal driving. It hasn't really been a big, big disparity from what it's predicting for, for what I actually get. It's been pretty good, and that's one thing I do like about VW. So let me just quickly talk about some of my driving thoughts in this segment here. All right, so let me just give you my quick driving thoughts of the ID4 all-wheel drive. Um, I would encourage you to go check out my video that I did on the single motor variant back last fall because a lot of the comments are going to be very similar on this. 
Um, this, the differences that I could see is that this feels a little heavier. Obviously it is because it's got the second motor. It was a little bit more heavier and it feels like an, a little bit more like an SUV, even though it is. It does sit pretty high. It actually sits a little higher than the Model Y, just a little bit. So, you know, it, it, it is more like an SUV. You feel it, even though it's got the lower center of gravity, you still feel it. These have 20 inch wheels, they're winters. Um, so, you know, they've been gripping the roads fine. But, um, uh, you know, the extra motor does make a difference. It gives you a bit more pep to, to the vehicle. Now, we haven't had any snow, and that was one of the reasons I was hoping that I could really test out the all-wheel drive variant is in the snow. But we haven't had any this week. But if we do get some before I return this vehicle, I'll add it into this uh, to the end of the segment here. Uh, but the overall driving impressions are good. I've got it in sport mode, so I'm just going to stop here at this um, stop sign and then kind of give it some, some juice here and... Uh, see how it goes so yeah it's it's snappier than the single motor but not neck snapping um, that's full on out you know zero to 90 uh, kilometers an hour at that at that part um, it's good I mean again this is a heavier vehicle it's bigger it's for families carrying stuff so it's not going to be a sports car performance wise but it's very adequate for an EV as well and if you think that you you need uh, an all-wheel drive vehicle because of the road conditions and where you live and the types of weather that you have or you're you know country and muddy roads wet roads a lot whatever the case is then certainly it's a great investment because it just gives you that better traction and handling capabilities in where the elements are impacting the drive however if you predominantly don't drive in those areas then spending the extra money on an all-wheel drive and of course you're losing range because this is going to use up more power so you're even though it's the same battery pack as a single motor you do get less range on the all-wheel drives um, so it's not going to be as efficient as a single motor so it's something to consider you know weighing those those choices otherwise the cars is exactly it's great like the other one the software on this is more stable i haven't had any crashes um, i'm still not a huge fan of these haptic controls i think I, I might have mentioned that in the last review and every time i spend a bit of time with these it's like i'd rather have buttons but that's just me everybody's different but otherwise everything's been fine you know infotainment it could be they could have structured it a little bit better but it's okay as i mentioned it works and you get everything you need you get you know to find stuff sometimes you have to dig through some menus a little bit but that's the way the germans like to do things um, but everything works. Drives really nice. I mean, look how quiet it is. I'm doing, you know, almost 80 kilometers an hour into a bit of a wind, and it's super quiet. So, you know, the major pluses on the ID4 again is the comfort ride. This is a very comfortable vehicle. Go over anything. It just maintains the road. Even with these 20-inch wheels, winter tires, it's still very quiet. So they've done a lot of good things in soundproofing the vehicle and making it great for hauling kids and, and things around as well and other people to give them a relaxed atmosphere. Lots of room in the back seat. The boot's okay. You know, they can always be bigger at some points, but then, you know, you don't want anything too big either. So definitely adequate. Um, this actually has a small trailer hitch on it because you can't tow uh, with the ID4s. Uh, I, I haven't tried it. There's nothing at this time of year, but uh, it has that capability. So if you need that, this is a great vehicle. Uh, again, just from a driving characteristics, and that's what this segment, this part of the uh, episode is. Um, been driving around for a week; it's been great. I'll give you the range numbers and the and the my uh, 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 consumption numbers uh, coming up in a little bit as I finish this out. Um, you know, I've been in a bit of a cold, not that cold spell. It's been anywhere from minus three to plus three this week. It's been kind of bouncing around. Today, it's minus one, so it hasn't really been that cold. But if you live in that kind of environment. I'll tell you what the uh, all-wheel drive version gets from a range and um, how it handles the, uh, the the estimates on the numbers and how it drives. But like I said, no complaints. It's been really great um, to drive. Very comfortable vehicle, sturdy, stable, and uh, again, a big thumbs up for the ID4 in this kind of environment. So I've covered a lot of this uh, features in the uh, ID4 when I did my initial review. So you can uh, go check out that video and I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But one thing I just wanted to comment on, it seems that the software has got a little bit better since I last looked at it last year, um, specifically for the lane keeping assist. So uh, I'm on the highway here doing cruise control. And as you can see, the lane keeping is lit there. Um, and uh, basically, you just have to have your hand ever so lightly on the resting on the steering wheel and it doesn't uh, bonk at you or doesn't uh, 
ask you to um, take the wheel every 10 seconds or whatever and start chiming and all this kind of stuff. And I've been I've been doing this for about 40 minutes already at this speed and it's been flawless. So um, it stays in the lane pretty good. I mean, it does, you know, it does go back and forth a little bit, but it never gets too close to any of the lines. Um, and even in this faded uh, lines that we're seeing here with the winter time where we got a lot of salt buildup and dirt on the highways, the camera is recognizing the line system pretty good, even with some sun glare at times. So I have to admit, this is a pretty good system from VW. Um, I like the fact that I can just gently rest my hand on here and it doesn't have to warn me every 10 seconds. I know with my Model 3, you have to actually give it a good tug. Um, that's one of the things on it. So, um, you know, nicely done. Um, they, uh, they seem to have improved on this and it does make for a nice, relaxing highway drive. And lastly, before I wrap this up, I just wanted to mention about the all-wheel drive. So uh, on the last tape, last segment, I did not have any snow. Obviously, we've got snow today, so I've done a little bit. So doing a little driving around my neighborhood and trying to test out the all-wheel drive. One thing I've noticed is, so it does have more power to the rear motor, to the front motor. What that means, if you give it a lot of uh, juice, it will, it could fish out a little bit from the rear end, but the front will bring it back and it does have traction control, so it has those features. So you just have to be cognizant of that. It's not an equal 50-50 power distribution on these motors. So if you're driving in some of the heavier stuff, especially stuff that has not been treated yet, been plowed or salted, uh, the salter just came through here now, so uh, these roads are going to be a little bit better for grip. Take it easy. As always, excellent snow tires. Number one you know, thing you have to do is get the best snow tires you can and just watch your driving conditions. But this will have no problem. Good height clearance again. So I've been driving around for, for, for a little bit here and having really no issues. Just got to remember if you stomp on it, you're going to get that. Now it does have a traction driving mode setting, which is going to try to stabilize and e even that out. And it seems to work better than obviously don't leave it in sport mode or normal mode or even eco mode. Probably use that, that traction setting when you need it in conditions like this. One thing I wanted to mention is that the versatility in uh, the ID4 is pretty good. It's got a decent sized boot, just did some groceries. Nice low lift over here. I don't have to lift too high to throw these bags in uh, for groceries. And uh, again, just practicality. It's not the biggest one. It does have a 60-40 with a pass-through. Uh, but just, you know, in practical use, again, I'm using this car as I would as a daily driver. Uh, and it's, so far, it's, it's a very nice experience. A part of the uh, package that this ID4 has is the illuminated lights. So you walk up and you have lights on the door handles, uh, as you can see here. And also uh, a light on the ground here. Uh, some funky design, whatever that is. I don't know. Um, doesn't have it on the rear doors, just the front uh, driver and the passenger doors, but uh, the light package is pretty cool. Uh, the ambient lighting is nice as well. Um, just got a little bit under the seats here, but uh, not a whole lot um, in the back. As you can see, it's mainly in the front, and now you can change the colors and have it nicely set. It's a nice little touch and uh, just lights everything up. All right, so like I said, I hope you found that the driving uh, thoughts helpful as well when you're always thinking about an EV, but you know, you know my shtick folks, I'm all about trying to really relate this to what it could do for you in an average daily use case. And there's one thing I'm gonna repeat about the IT, uh, sorry, the ID4 that I've said in the last episode when I reviewed the uh, earlier model, is that from a value proposition, it's really good value for what you get that's out there on the marketplace today. You know, it's not going to be the fastest, it's not going to be the highest range, that kind of stuff, but it functions very, very well. Some minor nitpicking that I said there, but otherwise a very solid car, solidly built, handles well, it's quiet, it's got all great features. And when you compare that value pricing, so for this particular model, uh, this is a 63000 uh, about $63,500 tax in. Uh, because MSRP on this price, now this has an option package, uh, which will take it up uh, over the base price is $49,995 Canadian. And then with that $8,000 option package, it will take it up uh, and notch it up. And then I did some numbers and it came out to about $63,500 tax. And because this does qualify for the $5,000 federal rebate. So you do get that money back. So about tax in around that $63,500 mark. How does that compare against some of the other competitors on the market? Again, some of these competitors like Tesla's are going to be more efficient, longer ranges. 
But you know, you're going to pay for that. And some others that have higher ranges as well, you're going to pay a bit. And some will be pretty close in value, if not even better. So I've got a, a couple here that I've compared. So if we talk about Teslas with their Model 3 long range, tax in, uh, that's an all wheel drive version as well. And tax in, it's about $77,000 Canadian because there's zero rebate available on that now. 538 kilometers though range, right? Compared to 400 uh, or 386 to this. Now, um, and that's probably, re it's probably slightly shy. I think you might see 400 in this because I believe in the single motor, I, I popped over 400 before. Model Y, this is a little bit higher as I mentioned in the Model Y. So it sits a little higher. So it's fairly comparable. Uh, this might be a tad longer as well. But the all-wheel drive version, well, there is only all-wheel drive in the Model Y, that's about $88,000 tax in. Uh, so quite a jump now because the prices keep going up for Tesla, but 512 kilometers and all the thing Tesla brings you. If I start looking at some of the other models like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, they have an all-wheel drive. And if I, if I look at the packages that are available, that's close to this, the ultimate package, it's about 63, just under $64,000 Canadian tax in again, but uh, because it qualifies for that 5K rebate. So it starts, that 5K really comes in handy, folks, I'll tell you. And that's not including any provincial. So my pricing do not include Quebec, BC, or other provinces that have their own incentives. So if you live in those areas, you can check it out, use your calculators and figure out your pricing as well. Polestar 2, another all-wheel drive, uh, similar class variant, a little bit more like a sedan than an SUV, but they're all crossovers now, folks. Uh, that's 400 kilometer range, and that comes in at $66,500. So just a couple of grand more than the ID4, but the ID4 has ton more room, especially in the back seat uh, and the boot space as well. And it just sits higher, so you know it, there's a benefit there if you're looking for that. Looking at some domestic, if I bring in the Ford Mustang Mach-E, that's about 355 kilometer range. There's a dual motor version on all the trim packages that you can select. Um, and that comes in, played around some numbers at around the 65.5 mark as well. So again, a couple grand more than the ID4. Similar sizing, you know, it does sit fairly high. It's got a nice stance. Again, you be the judge of what you like. I'm just showing you what's out there. Um, and uh, from a selection, a little bit less uh, kilo EPA kilometer rating than the ID4, but again, EPA tends to be a bit low on everything. Then we bring in some, uh, so another a German vehicle, the Audi uh, Q4 e-tron, which is their newest uh, smaller SUV coming to the stable in a fully electrified form. I haven't had a chance to review that yet, but uh, its pricing is available online in Canada and you can reserve it in other area countries as well. 402 kilometers uh, EPA range, all wheel drive, about $71,000 tax in. So about uh, eight, eight to $9,000 more than the ID4 for a similar package, but do, but they do look different, of course. They do share the same platform, however. And the Kia EV6, the new neuro kit on the block here, the long range, uh, all wheel drive version of that. I picked the GT Line 1 package because it adds some goodies that gets it close to what this is with all the goodies. $61,700 tax in. 441 kilometer range. So slightly more range, faster charging. So there are characteristics obviously that you're going to see in some of those other models that you don't see in the ID4. And lastly, the uh, Volvo XC40 Recharge. I did a review episode on that as well. I encourage you to go check that out and I'll put the links for those episodes for the previous one for the ID4 and for the XC40. In fact, some of the, uh, most of the other models that I've done, you can find on my channel. So I probably don't even need to put links. $75,700 tax in. So about 12 grand more than the ID4. Hmm. Is it worth it? Again, you got to be a fan of that. Build quality is going to be the same, in my opinion, a lot of the same materials, just different looks, and you've got the different badges. So there's just some comparisons to that. Now, again, you've got to look around, folks. Look at your price, look at your needs, look at your daily driving ranges. If you want a trip, this does have a pretty decent charging curve because people can go drive for about three hours or so, three plus hours, take, take a 20 to 30 minute break and then continue on. I think that that's very reasonable. All right, so my closing thoughts on the ID4. Again, I'm trying to keep this one brief, folks. I don't need to go into all the details. Uh, again, I've said what I said last time. It's a great value for what you get. Yes, some little things that could, some tweaks that could be done and VW might do them eventually. Really solid, great performer, good, good uh, convenience for a lot of room, spaciousness, things you can throw, things you can haul around, some towing capabilities, things like that. It's got a lot of attributes on this vehicle. 
that are well worth you looking at. The only negative, or the main, one of the main negatives I guess I'll say right now, is that it's gonna be hard to get one. Because they're so new, there's been such a high demand for VW. I believe they've sold over about 140,000 of these globally last year in 2021, and they're still ramping up. In North America, right now, we're still seeing units come from Zwickau for people that have them on order, uh, because the order book, I think, for 2022 in Canada may be closed by now. They may just be taking a wait list, and that seems to be common across checking out some other vendor sites as well. So, you know, if you're thinking of one, put an order in soon. I know it may be tough to test drive one, and I, and I get it. You know, if I was in the market right now looking, I'd want to make sure that I do test drive them. But, you know, my, my point, folks, is um, look at a lot of the reviews, take our criticisms and our, our understanding of the vehicles to heart, and then, you know, let us know what you think. So, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. I've got to stop now. I've got a snowplow that's gonna run me over. Everybody, subscribe if you have it on YouTube. If you're on Patreon, thank you very much. Stay safe, keep watching the EV Marketplace, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.